Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to share with you a couple of different ways of painting reflections. Um, in the first two paintings, this is going to be about painting saran wrap or any kind of plastic that's reflective but also translucent. And I'm going to use a couple of um, photo images from one of my students um, where it is a uh, red bell pepper wrapped in some saran wrap, creating some shadows and highlights. So what I did is I poured a little bit of gum arabic onto my palette and I'm going to mix just tiny little amounts of it into my paint to make it um, easier to lift for the highlights. Now, because the highlights are so, um, they're so precise and so angular, I think it would be beautiful to contrast it with some wet into wet painting. So I'm going to wet, I didn't tape my paper very well, so hopefully it will not warp too much where you'll be able to see what I am doing. But I'm going to do some wet into wet um, painting. And I will just start with the pepper because I can't wait to make some of those beautiful um, warm and cool reds. See. I need to use a little more pigment. It's still a little bit wet. I'm gonna let the paper dry just a touch more because you can see it's still very runny. Um, so if I wait another maybe 30 seconds to a minute, can hear my stool is getting all this many many years old it's always been with me in my studio it's starting to be a little bit better you could see see I waited 30 seconds and you can see my colors they're still very runny but they're staying a little bit more together containing a form you know a shape that I have painted um, and I'm going to sort of ignore the highlights but because I'm going to lift them later although it's kind of weird to paint by ignoring the highlights I'm so tempted to leave them out um, I'm going to add a bit of blue to my red to begin to make some of the deeper tones maybe even some greens That's better. You can see the difference that's using the greens. Now I'm using my color a little bit more dense than just a wash consistency so that um, when I put it onto this really wet paper you could see it holds all my brush marks so you can kind of control it quite a bit um, with your brush. Such beautiful, rich color in these photographs. And again, I want all of these soft edges. I want them to contrast. Here it's a much lighter tone, kind of a more neutral pink. Color. And if there's a color that runs a little bit too much, you can see down here, you can use a dry brush to help you control that edge. But the other thing you could do is, I'm going to lift some of this color because it's really light in that area. One second, I'm going to add a little bit more dark while my paper is wet in here. Do a little bit in here. I 
Juliana. And then um, the other thing here as well. Um, the other way to control this low air is to area is to add the shadow. Um, so, and the shadow has this really beautiful transition, almost into a blue green, from a sort of violet down under here. My paper is starting to dry, so I'm going to add some water to soften the edge of my shadow. I'm actually going to let my shadow go all the way. Too. To be very careful from the top, softening it so that it doesn't create a blossom. You just want to wet it just a little bit just to soften that edge. I'm not really like spreading the paint or adding too much water. My brush is barely wet. Um, all right, and then I'm going to re wet some parts of this and paint the grays, the neutral tones. Again, I'm gonna let it dry just for a moment. Let me see if I can make some grays using the reds and greens since those are so prevalent. So maybe yeah, that makes, that's pretty close. Um, the reason being is of course, um, not only is this, um, saran wrap translucent but it is also reflective and so of course some of the um, reds in the pepper are reflected in the saran wrap and the green of course because there's the green part of the pepper down here um, but also the greens and the reds they kind of play off of each other right so even if there's a lot of reds reflected our eye will inevitably see the neutral colors the gray colors as greenish in comparison so if you go back to that gray video the video of mixing grays uh, the main um, point of that was that you could make grays using all these different colors well there are advantages to using certain colors in certain situations so because of all the reds and the pepper i would want to use my reds and greens mixtures to make grays rather than i don't know yellows and purples right so i forgot to add my gum arabic So I'm making these areas because I'm going to be lifting. It's almost the opposite to the first drawing. In the first drawing, I wanted to preserve as many lights. And in here, I'm actually adding more um, darks than I need because I want some. I want to be able to lift. If you make it too light, when you lift it, you, you know, it won't be nearly as noticeable. There are some pretty strong shadows in there. Um, and we need them to kind of show off the lighter areas, right? It gets really dark in here where it's tied. And I don't like this later edge that's been created, so I'm going to add a little bit more 
of that dark burgundy along the edge. And again, I'm just going to use my um, wet brush to allow the color to blend softly into the rest of the painting. And I just noticed that I had this interesting drip. So I think I would just... So now that um, the painting is pretty much dry, it's not completely dry, but it's dry enough for me to begin to remove um, some of the highlights. This is the example in which I used a little bit of gum arabic added to my paint. And here's some examples of brushes. You may want to use like something like this, which is flat and stubby and sort of you can <clears throat> press into it, but it also can make a thin line um, if you use it on the edge. You can also use bristle brushes. Um, so experiment with different ones. You'll find the brush that is um, easiest for you to remove. So the way that... Um, lifting watercolor works is you have to re-wet the area you have to rehydrate that place of color with water and you move it around just slightly Let's see. just like this brush let me try this one that's a little better you want the brush to be quite a little bit stiff um that will give you a better edge to sort of press against press a little bit into the paint and make sure your brush is clean because as you could see i just put some pink into it but you can lift quite a bit of color here let's lift now the nice thing about lifting without resist is you could have both soft and hard edges so you could have a really sharp line or you could have a little bit of a softer edge. So for example, right here, there is a sharp line along the edge. And what I'm doing is kind of um, drying my brush with a little bit of paper towel in between and also cleaning off the color off of it. So it will have a very different look than the um, painting with resist. This will have a much softer look, less super realistic and a little bit more um, um, kind of fluid, a little bit more watercolory, a little more, uh, a little softer. One is done better than the other. It's just a different expression. I wish I had a smaller one of these. Maybe this would work because it's turning out that my brush, no, that's too soft. <clears throat> that my brush is a bit soft. Let me try my bristle brush. This might work. little bit big. So you can see here where I have a softer edge as well as a sharper edge to my highlight and to layer many lines in here because there are many highlights going through this area wrapping around the pepper
I think both techniques are quite useful to try and test out because there are times when maybe you're not necessarily um, painting a very methodical reflections painting but you want some areas of your painting to be lifted or some highlights to bring out it is really useful um, to be able to lift watercolor and also to have a practice of you know how to work with that lifting when to make it brighter when to make it more precise and so forth it's just it's a kind of a negative when you work in drawing you do a negative drawing where you give your um, paper a middle value and then you remove um, the highlights from it this is a little bit similar to that process you're working in reserve in reverse, sorry, a kind of a negative process. I'm trying not to move the paint around too much, just kind of add a little bit of water. You can see the wiggle in my brush, but it's more just like on the surface. I'm not really pressing very hard into the paper. You can see it was a lot faster to just mask the highlights than it is to lift them because that's a lot of highlights to lift so it is pretty time consuming but again we'll give you a totally different look I can hear my puppy snoring. might even lift this a little bit making it a bit lighter this highlight here it's not really a highlight but the, the way that the pepper turns is quite dramatic making for a very dramatic change in value here look like plastic quite yet <laughs> but we hope the ones who we bring in enough of these highlights and I will probably go back and emphasize a few of these with some deeper shadows When a painting is in progress, it's, sometimes it's really difficult to see where it's going. Um, it may seem a bit strange looking and um, may not seem at all like what it looks like when it's finished. Painting unfolds almost in the same way kind of a plant grows. If you look at a plant at different stages, it doesn't look anything like the plant at the end when it's giving fruit um, when it's just a sprout or uh, when in the process of growing or when it has flowers every stage looks so different and it's the same with painting enjoy every stage of painting every stage of painting has something to teach us um, if you are observant and um, notice 
the beauty of that stage, right? It's the same with the plants. If you notice how beautiful a plant is, even when it's dying, even when it's turning to seed, um, it's just a different stage. And the same with painting. Each, each stage of development in a painting can offer you guidance and kind of like gifts that you can use in a painting, right? Something in that stage that you can discover that looks particularly beautiful um, or unique. So I'm enjoying kind of the different, the range of values within the highlights that, I, that I'm discovering. Um, I think I didn't add enough gum arabic as the lifting it's okay but it's not like super easy it does take as you could see like two three even four kind of passes of my brush to go over to just lift it up to the lightest possible value Also because of the nature of this brush, which is a little bit bigger than I wish it was, I'm kind of not able to make exact shapes that I would have preferred, but it's all right. And that beautiful soft edge, I'm definitely gonna leave it soft like that. <laughs> Ricky. I think he's dreaming. Of meeting a friend at the park. And I think I'm going to need some stronger darks in here. Each color will lift a little bit different because each pigment has a different staining pow power. Of course, I did use these reds in mixing the grays as well. So some of those pigments are in them. It's a very tedious, meticulous, slow process. I'm not sure why I went on to do this because it is requires quite a bit of patience and time. Which I am finding myself lacking at the moment.
There's a little bug that really wants to crawl onto this pepper. It's starting to look a little bit reflective, but it's going to take a bit more value in the darker areas, especially through here and through here to kind of bring out, emphasize some of these folds and highlights. Gray doesn't seem to be lifting as well. I must have not put any gum arabic in it. It's not lifting as well as the reds.
can see I really want to bring some red into the gray partially because I am bored by the lifting process and partially because I want to make the painting a little bit more interesting. So since I can't lift the color to be lighter, I can make some areas a bit darker to intensify the contrast and to bring out certain details. Again, you can be as detailed as you like. I, I, I like this kind of flowy quality of the painting where it may look like plastic, but it may also look like something else. Um, Sometimes when you have a degree of ambiguity in a painting, it, um, invites the viewer to wonder, to ask questions, to maybe even spend a little bit longer with the painting than when everything is, um, explained and, and clearly presented. A painting often can echo and, and mirror the mysteries that we encounter in life. Even a simple painting like this. taking a simple subject and representing it in a way that kind of challenges our, or invites us to think about the subject a little bit deeper, a little bit look at it a little closer, um, is certainly a work over the artist. So we want to leave some of the dynamic and movement that um, was captured in these lifted lines, right? A kind of flowing feeling. And yet you might want to also emphasize um, certain areas of reflections. So the degree of definition that you decide to 
capture in a painting is really 